Greetings subscribers and the curious persons. Welcome to another vlog inspired by the Goodreads Tuesday Talks group. And this week's topic is what are your favourite Christmas stories or books? Well, as people who've already watched my previous talk on matching books to seasons and holidays will know, I don't really pick books based on the season, so I don't really have any favourite Christmas books, either in terms of books that I always read at Christmas or books that I enjoy because they're about Christmas. So I was thinking about this and the only book I can think of that I've read every year because it's Christmas is one that I read a very long time ago when I was a child. Little Grey Rabbit's Christmas by Alison Utley and potentially uh, some of you will remember Little Grey Rabbit. Uh, Little Grey Rabbit was a sensible rabbit in a dress and she had some animal friends to also wore clothes for it was a children's book and one of her friends was Mr Hare who wasn't quite mad but he was a little bit impulsive as it were and got himself into scrapes to the extent you can get into a scrape in a book that's aimed at young children and all I can remember about Little Grey Rabbit's Grey Little Grey Rabbit put my teeth back in Little Grey Rabbit's Christmas apart from reading it once a year every year for a chunk of my childhood was the scene in which Mr. Hare and one of the hedgehogs goes sledging and they come down the hill and because Mr. Hare is impulsive and thrill-seeking and the hedgehog is young and impulsive and thrill-seeking they have picked a very steep hill and Mr. Hare staggers into Little Grey Rabbit's house with bits of twig in his hair and his jacket disarrayed because he was quite smart for an impulsive creature and he utters the line that for many years cracked me up every time I thought about it never go hedging with a sledge hog which I later learnt is a spoonerism but that's not really relevant to the story but, so that's the only book I can think of that I read every year for Christmas that I still remember reading every year for Christmas which sent my mind off on a bit of a tangent so I see well if a book has stuck with me that long then potentially the kind of book that I should put on Goodreads they think would I rate it well I haven't read it for a very long time and if I rated it now then I'd be rating it on the basis that decades ago I really liked it rather than my objective view on it now which means probably I won't put it on Goodreads because it's not really going to help people who like the kind of books that I like now to find a book that they'll like and I doubt anyone who's looking for recommendations for a great children's story is going to be coming to my Goodreads page because it would just be one on its own so it wouldn't help and it would influence my recommendations potentially so it wouldn't help me from a mechanical recommendations perspective either which makes a lot of sense and seems very clear and would apply equally to any other books I remember fondly from my childhood but it made me think that 
I started on Goodreads in 2012, so three years ago. And over the many years between becoming an adult and today, my reading tastes have changed through my life experiences, the other books I've read, and I've already noticed even over books that I added on 2012, that potentially when I reread them, my rating changes. Which raised a hideously complex aspirational rating system in my head. Some mechanism in which not only does if you like this book, then everyone else who likes this book about the same amount as you do, their recommendations are taken into account for other books you might like, but also the length of time that the rating's been there. So if you write, so if I write a book in 2012, it has a powerful impact on my recommendations for 2012, 2013, but at some point between then and 2050, if I haven't read any other books by that author, that recommendation has less of an impact on the recommendations I'm getting. It has less, potentially even less waiting for other people who are now following me. So the recommendation chain, not only based on what person A liked, but when they liked it. So if two people liked a book in the last month, their recommendations potentially would mesh together. If one person liked it in the last month, the other liked it five years ago, that other person's recommendations won't be such a strong influence. Which would be horrible to code, potentially wouldn't actually produce a noticeable improvement in recommendation value due to the immense weight of recommendations based on a star rating being slanted by people using star ratings for different things, using a star rating of zero or one for a book they didn't finish, or rating the bit of the book they didn't finish as four on the basis it was very well written, but they just didn't enjoy it, and all of these various things. So I don't know if actually it would serve anything other than intellectual pleasure in having created it in a way that was sturdy enough to function for more than a trivial number of people. But it does, as an idea, prove one thing. There are very few topics, no matter how apparently clear and obvious, upon which my mind will not take me off in an odd direction. And so I should probably end it there before I end up somewhere completely unrelated to books altogether. So, toodaloo!